quadratic functions are any functions that have a certain uh, specific general form. So I'm going to show you that at least what a quadratic means. It means we see something that has x squared in it. And this actually has to be the highest um, term of x. In other words, y equals, I don't know, x squared plus x cubed, not quadratic. Okay, that won't work. But uh, something with x squared, blah, 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 or any numbers in front, that's quadratic. By the way, if something has a power of 3, we say it's cubic. Uh, but if anything is, we're going to be talking for the next uh, couple of videos about quadratics. And that's just going to mean anything with x squareds. So first of all, let's look at what the general form looks like. Okay, the general form, in other words, generically, we often write it like this. So any quadratic can be something in this form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is important. This right here is the general form for any quadratic. Now what I mean by this is that a and b and c are just numbers. Okay, in other words, they're just constants. But you have to have an x squared happening. So in other words, a cannot be 0. Because if you make zero, a 0, that means this whole thing cancels out, and then it's something x plus something, and that's linear or something else. So a can't be 0. It has to be 1, or it can be greater. It can be negative. It can be a fraction. It just can't be 0. Now, if we look at these, and these are just numbers, so this is how we spot a general form of a quadratic. Now, what kind of shapes do they have? Well, quadratics can be drawn. I think I'm going to draw you, yeah, I'll draw you three of them, just for fun, just to show you some different graphs here. This is x, this is y, x, y, x, y. So quadratics can have all sorts of different shapes. I mean, they can, uh, they can do like this, maybe it's like, exactly like this, maybe it's like this. So basically the shape is a parabola. That's what we say, it's a parabola. Some people say parabola, but I've always learned it's called parabola. Um, some of my students would joke around and say it's parabably right, uh, which is lame, but I enjoy uh, those kind of jokes. Uh, so if we look at these parabolas, Notice the shape that they have, right? They are either sort of opening up or down, and it depends. So they, they, they open upwards, and it turns out they only do that if a is greater than 1. So in other words, um, if this term in front of here is positive, then these are going to open upwards. So this one right here is one where a is greater than 1. This one over here is also one where a is greater than 1. Now what makes this equation different than that one? Well, it's going to be what b is and what c is and how they relate to a and how they all relate to each other. Turns out a, b, and c are really important. But if it open upwards, it's a is greater than 1. And if it opens, oops, I guess I'll put an s here. So it opens uh, downwards, then we have a is less than 1. I'm really writing sloppy, I'm sorry about that. So it opens downwards, a is less than 1. So that's this one, for example, here. Now, same people say that these are, this is like a sad parabola, and this is a happy parabola. I've even had a teacher who showed us like a parabola dance that he did, which was actually pretty cool. But, um, or funny, I guess. But they either open up or down. So just from the general form, just by looking at it, we can actually tell, first of all, well, what a, b, and c are. They could be 0. Well, c could be 0, b could be 0, a just can't be. Because it has to be something with an x squared. That's the key thing with a quadratic. Now, if we talk about them opening up or down, uh, those of you who know lots about calculus, and I'll be doing some uh, videos about those as well, but for calculus, what we say by those is that the second derivative is positive here. In other words, it opens upwards like this. That means the second derivative is positive. And if it opens downwards, we have to say the second derivative is negative. And if you look at the um, calculus videos that I'm going to make, then you'll see a better explanation of what I mean by that. But when I say it opens upwards, it's like if you dropped a ball in here, it would sort of, you know, it would sort of, it'd be like a bowl. Whereas if you had a ball in here, it would just fall down. That's sort of a way to remember if it goes up or down, or I suppose you can also tell if things are sort of happy or sad. Now, we can go a little bit further than that. I mean, the uh, the y-intercepts 
for quadratics are really easy. And the reason is if we look at some sort of quadratic graph, so again, this is X, this is Y, and now some sort of graph that does, I don't know, something like this, something like that. Where it crosses the Y intercept is really easy, right? This is this point, this is the Y intercept right here, or the Y axis. So the intercept is right here. That's where it crosses the Y axis. And it's easy because look at its X value. What's the X value when you're right here? Well, X is zero here, right? This is like X equals one, two, three, whatever. This is negative. But there right here is where X is zero. So Y intercept is easy because all you have to do is just set X equals to zero. That's how you do the Y intercept for these. However, the X intercept, so just so you know at least, the X intercept is a bit harder. And I'm gonna be spending the next bunch of videos showing you what, uh, how to find the X intercept. It turns out uh, the next bunch of videos are gonna be just about how to find the X intercept. It doesn't mean it's not doable, it's totally doable. It's just a matter of, it just takes a bit more work and we have a whole bunch of different tools that we can use. But for the Y intercept, super easy, just set X equals zero. So for example, this, what are the coordinates of the Y intercept of this equation right here? Well, in the context, you can probably guess that it's a quadratic, but I know it's quadratic because that's an X squared and nothing higher. So this is quadratic. That means it's a parabola opening up or down or whatever. Now I know it opens upwards because this two is positive. So already I know it's a parabola that does this. It's a happy parabola. Right, but uh, how does it go? What's the Y intercept? That I can figure out. I just set X equals zero. So in my equation right here, Y equals, and I just put in a zero wherever I see the X's. Right, so this cancels out because zero squared is zero. Zero times two is still zero. Four times zero, still zero. So those aren't important. So it's just y equals minus two. Now if I want the coordinates, then technically I should say x equals zero. So that means really, oops, actually what I'll do is instead of putting the box around this, oh God. What I'll do is I'll just say this, that x was equal to zero, y was negative two. But if I want the coordinates, what I should do is write it in proper notation. So coordinates means zero comma negative two. These are the coordinates of the y intercept. And what this means for us is that we can do a graph of this if we felt like it. Well, at least we could start to sketch it. Now we don't know all the information yet, but we know it's a happy parabola. In other words, it opens upwards. And we know that um, it has a y-intercept of negative 2. So that means its y-value is negative 2. So it's down here somewhere. Now I'm not exactly sure what it does, but I know it has to open upwards and it has to pass through this point. So I don't know, maybe it does something like this. The problem is I don't know what this is yet and I don't know what this is yet. I'm not sure you know, how stretched out this is or if it's really narrow, but I do know it has to pass through this point and it has to open upwards. 